TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are not live, but you can leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells, man. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. And this is hand, this is one of y'all favorites now. Shout out to the first responders, man. Let's hit that like button, man. Let's get that video pushed, man. Like goal, 250. That's easy for police responders. That's underachieving. Don't forget we are partnered with the Blueprint Mastermind. This is brand new, this one. Brand new, so you know. It's actually pretty funny, I've watched it twice. <laughs> so, the link to this is down in the description. Uh, don't forget all my old videos are over here. And uh, don't forget man. We are on Patreon, going crazy. Links all down in the description. Let's get into this, man. Season 15, episode one. Let's go. The interceptors are breathing. Two tricks. West Yorkshire is one of the biggest police forces in the country, with more than five and a half thousand officers protecting over two million people who live there. Get out of the car now! Get out of the car! Patrolling its 1,300 miles of roads, including sections of the M1 and M62. And dealing with everything this great county has to offer. Get up! I was brought up on, you know, that Yorkshire grit and put your head down and you get on with it basically and that, that's the way it is. You know, Yorkshire people are tough and uncompromising really, but so are the police that police them, so happy days really. It's Sunday night and Interceptors Mike Rowe and Joe Lund are out in the unmarked car in the north of Bradford. They're on the hunt for a silver VW, which is suspected to have been involved in a robbery. Where's it last been seen? Honestly, when I watch this show, I really be feeling like the police. <laughs> like, I feel like I got a badge on sometimes. I'm gonna edit that out. Holly Road. So it's in Undercliff area of Bradford. She's up here. Try again. Done a robbery? Quite an eye one. I want to get hold of them, really, don't we? Especially if it's so soon after a fence, it might still be the same to watch yeah, driving be, around, doesn't it? it'd be Quite pretty good. high. Corrie fan Sergeant Joe has only just joined the team, and tonight... Is this the girl? Joe Linda, 13 years, hot fuzz. It's her first time out on patrol. Her partner Mike's been on the team for nine years now, and when he gets a night in front of the telly, he'd rather watch MotoGP racing than soaps. Tonight, they're fully focused on tracking down the suspect VW, and it's just gone past an automatic number plate recognition camera nearby. We set a hit on a silver VW Golf As they get to a petrol station, they spot the silver VW. Saving garage. Saving garage? Yeah. Aha. Uh -huh. Three, two. We've got the vehicle on the Texaco petrol station forecourt on Killinor Road. Some units coming up here. They want to get to the car while it's stopped to prevent a pursuit. And as other units are still a few minutes away, they decide to make their move. Are you ready for this? Yeah. Do you want to just jump? Rush in there. If you've got uh, head on. Vehicle, um, Stop the driver. Yeah, just grab the driver. The plan is to block the car in from the front and for Joe to go for the driver's door. But the driver has other ideas.
He's seen Joe running up to his car. I've never seen a police attempt to stop a car fail this miserably. You're not even fully in front of the vehicle. Like, you're right here. Of course he can squeeze the, like, a bent, a, a Hummer can get through here. Like, what is, man, I gotta, let me just put this. I'm telling you, this be making me feel like the police. Like, I could have did this better. <laughs> like, come on now. He then hits the concrete base of the petrol pump, which spins his back end right into Joe, slamming her into a car. The driver then reverses towards her, before speeding off through the middle of the pumps. You know what? You know where he going? Just off this, you going to jail, buddy. You just hit a cop with your car? That's like, what the, they gonna get you for attempted M, or grievous body injury, whatever. He hit me. You all right? He hit me. Yeah, I'm all right, but he has hit me. Vehicle knocks one of the officers over. There's damage on the petrol station forecourt. Now it's time to hunt down the reckless driver who's put Joe's life in jeopardy. Interceptors Mike Rowe and Joe Lund were on the lookout for a silver golf. They tried to push in there. Driver golf into the base of a petrol pump, knocking her. Seriously, just give us an entire replay like we just didn't see her into another car before nearly reversing over her and speeding out to the petrol station. After making sure his colleague was okay. Uh, he hit me. You all right? He hit me. Yeah, I'm all right, but he has hit me. Mike's gone after the runaway vehicle. Vehicle's knocked one of the officers over. There's damage on the petrol station forecourt. But it's had a head start on him. <sighs> Where's it gone? So you have abandoned. <sighs> <laughs> the driver's ditched it at the next turning. Obviously. There's no way you can stay in the And run off into the darkness along with the passengers. But Mike's main concern is for his colleague. <sighs> You all right, Joe? Yeah. Where did it get you? I don't know. It's in me, arm. I think. Where? You all right? Just, uh... You go and have a sit back sure. in car? Not sit back in car. Right. Don't worry about it. All available units are flooding the area, and Mike needs to find out where the runners might have gone. Have you seen anybody run off from it? Thank you. Down alleyway. Right, so... Thank you very much. You all right? Yeah, can't see anything. Can you look? Like, oh, shouting, yeah. We shouting, shouting there. Don't do it. Don't do it. As what? soon as it started reversing backwards, oh. but it was too late. You're out. You I think it must. Right? Yeah, it must have just, just pushed me up. here somewhere. Yeah. Get somebody else up here. <laughs> Joe's been lucky to escape with only minor injuries. The damage to the VW shows just how desperate the driver was to escape. Three one. We're with a vehicle on killing old drive. No occupants have made off, one in the direction of Otley Road, the other in the direction of Pollard Lane. Asian males, one wearing a blue zipper puddy. No description of passenger. While other units look for the runners, Bob Hoyle and Andy Howarth visit the petrol station to gather evidence and check out the damage. I take it this is it's not right as it's gone past, yeah, is it? Yeah, yeah. Is it all on camera? Are we able to it get access to it, camera, Ken? Yeah. Will you be able to go check for us? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. I've got these cameras out here, yeah? It'll yeah, be this one, what? Right? Pump five. Yeah, pump five. Obviously, the officers came from this way. We'll seize our drive. We'll do that and we'll get someone to view it tomorrow, I'll take it all off and then get it back to you. Yeah? Okay, that's fine. Last year, more than 8,000 police officers were injured on duty. Tonight, Joe's added to that statistic. Didn't expect the cop, the, the Volkswagen hit her left side, and then her right arm hit the car next to it. Them coming towards me to try and run me over, or then to try and get out through a petrol station. At one point, I thought it was going to go over one at fuel pumps, and I was thinking, oh, it's all going to blow up. Fortunately, it was just a bin that he used to uh, get out. Can you imagine a vehicle wiping out a petrol pump with all that fuel? would have been uh, disastrous. Joe's left her mark on the car she was thrown into. 
She wasn't the other. Doesn't the fuel just sit underneath the pump? And then the gas and the actuators actually pull the, the fuel through once it, once you. Am I? Only one in harm's way. No, Billy was dumb. filling up when his van. I don't think it just comes out. And was reverse rammed. Always wear your seatbelt, especially when you're in Bradford, pal. And he had his son Jaden in the front seat. I stopped here, filling my diesel up like you do. He's sat in van. Next minute, the biggest bang. He knocked the van from there to here. And the next minute, it's Silver Golf's trying to reverse to a manoeuvre straight into the diesel pump. I thought the pump was going to explode because obviously it drove into it. So I grabbed him out of the van and run. And nobody says. It's a W dad. It's a W dad. For real. His dad was actually his hero on this day. Well, he's just a hero every day, but he was actually, you know what I'm saying? All it is, is all it happens every night here. Bradford. Welcome to Bradford. Joe's had a proper welcome too. Like a bird. <laughs> it's all right. On her first night on patrol. Put right dent in that car. If I remembered it, you sort of like went like that into it. Like that? Yeah. <laughs> watch me you, watch me you. My bad. The evening's events have had an impact on everyone who witnessed them. It just goes off, man. It goes crazy in here, man. It will, it will like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> I don't know what to make of it. It will chaos. It's Bradford. With the runners having gone to ground, the CCTV seized and witness statements taken, Joe and Mike returned to the station. How long have you worked here officially? Today's the first day. <laughs> You've already been rambling run over. So you're doing alright, aren't you? Yeah, I'm not doing bad. Welcome to Bradford. <laughs> Thankfully, she's able to laugh it off. But everyone involved knows it could have been far worse. It sounds like it's been a bit of a shock for her, as it would be. You don't expect to come to work and come home injured. Hopefully we'll uh, we'll better track down the She gonna feel that in the morning. She might not feel it right now. Adrenaline, whatever that little drink is she drinking, getting it coursing through her body. You know what I'm saying? She gonna feel it soon. People are responsible and if they're willing to do that to us, what else are they willing to do? The driver of the Golf is still outstanding and wanted in connection with the robbery as well as dangerous driving, criminal damage, and assaulting a police officer. Jo returned to the station where she was checked over by a nurse. I've got some... You would have did that in America, you would have been a different outcome, buddy. You wouldn't have left that area. Well, and then I'll probably have some more bros in come out tomorrow, but she reckons I've been really lucky, and this kit has uh, probably saved me from further injury with all, you know, because it's so thick as a body arm, and so... Yeah, wait and see how I feel tomorrow. <laughs> Morning has just broken in West Yorkshire, and interceptor Steve Oliver and rookie Amy are coming to the end of a long shift. If you didn't start in their early 20s wearing a blue top, and the tracksuit bottoms. Yeah, 120, and that's the uh, suspect who's run from the vehicle, is it? Yes, yes. Vehicle apologies, it's a uh, light blue or silver BMW. Thank you. So we're going to report of um, a road traffic collision, single vehicle, uh, all occupants yeah, have made off. 18-year sure. um. veteran Steve's guilty pleasure is chilling out on the sofa and watching Strictly Come Dancing. And he's got some thoughts as to why the runaway driver has made the nifty move of legging it from the crashed Beamer. A couple of reasons, stolen vehicle, uh, uninsured, no documents for the vehicle, simply could be a pool vehicle, um, or could be drink driving. A couple of minutes later, they're at the scene. Yeah, we're uh, with this RTC. Looks like it's gone uh, straight through the barriers onto the grassland. The car's in the middle of the park, and there's a helpful member of the public close by. Yeah, right, sir. I don't suppose you've seen who's made yeah, off of it, have you? Yeah, I see one male. Yeah. Uh, red oh, in think. dark blue jeans, I think. Yeah. Black top. I think I did just one. Do we know Brown that? hair. Yeah. Show back at sides. Jumped over that fence and then yeah. it was McDonald's. Yeah, That's the last time I've seen him. 
Hey, it's Romeo 5-1, just to come in. I've got a gentleman here who says he's seen the chap running off. He's run off towards uh, McDonald's at Thornbury Roundabout. Say it's Bradford 2. A dog unit's been dispatched to hunt down the runaway driver, so Steve and Amy can check out the crash scene. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's having a lucky day. Look at that. He's missed all the trees. What the neck. The car appears to have driven straight through the fence, taking out a brick pillar in the process. It's taken a real battering. My guess is he's possibly had a night out, uh, gone straight on at the roundabout. Somehow he's missed the two trees there, gone straight through the middle of it. So I'm everything. telling you, boy, every time I hear them roundabouts, something like this is connected to it. But having a lucky day, and he's clearly thought better of hanging around. We obviously do have a couple of welfare issues uh, because his airbag's gone off. Looks like a reasonable speed that he's collided with everything, uh, and he could be injured. A minute later, the dog unit arrives. Yeah, a gentleman at the scene when we've turned up says he's got blue jeans, uh, possibly a black or dark blue Adidas top. And they soon spot someone fitting the description. Yes, yes, we're just coming down uh, Leeds Old Road now. Uh, does he mean down at Killing Old Road, that junction down there? The dog unit has him, but this suspect isn't going quietly. <laughs> night out that boy is 17 17 uh <laughs> 17 times over the legal limit Look, you hear this guy? he'd attracted the attention of local residents by banging on doors and now he's doing his best to wake up the whole street film this put this facebook wide hey, yes oh, i will do down. myself a great big calm down Steve's not 100%. This is the driver of the crashed car, but he does fit the description and has blood on his hands. If he's the driver, he's straight through a wall, so I'm guessing. Drink our drugs on this one, right? We'll, yeah. We're we'll getting taken You've down. You reckon? <laughs> I'm guessing that's going to be it. Uh, we haven't got anything else on the uh, on the vehicle. Steve now tries to find out some more information. What's your name, sir? My name? Whatever you want it to be. Well. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah, what is it? Whatever the f you want it to be, mate. And although he's keeping stum on what he's called, the gobby suspect is happy to provide a dawn chorus. Come on, everybody, everybody, put your hands together. Warned you once. I've it's warned you once. Wow. Stop it. Oh, our father go out in heaven. Thankfully for local residents, a van arrives to take Bradford's answer to Michael Bublé to the cells. Please, love, come with me. Just I'm coming now. Bit. Yeah, come on then. Hola. That's it. Hola. Hola. To take Bradford's answer to Michael Bublé to the cells. Please, love, come with me. Just I'm coming now. Bit. Yeah, come on then. Hola. That's it. Hola. Hola. This how is the rookie cop. Oh, What's your head when you get in, sir? Excellent. Sit your down for me. Even though he sat down, the man's blocking the door with his legs. Put your foot in. Put your foot in. Move your foot. Stop being in it. Wait there. Get Once that leg. Before this happens, just please let me tell my family a little bit. No. Please. Not here. Move your leg. Please. Move please. your leg now. Just please move. They've no option but to take him to the ground so they can put leg restraints on. But the taste of tarmac doesn't stop the music. Unfortunately, they're not carrying a mouth restraint. But once they have his legs secured, it's time for a second trip to the back of the van. Great. Let's see if we can get him in again. I'm interested in y'all doing a roadside <laughs> test. I want to see what he blow. <laughs> and as he can't move his legs, the man sticks his head out instead. Oh, for God's oh, sake. Oh, spit out! Spit out! Keep your teeth to yourself. Oh, oh, my God. God. 
He's now trying to bite them. Help me out. There we go. Jesus. Steve's used to dealing with difficult suspects, but this one's been particularly tricky. Then he's locked up under Section 4 at the moment, which is unfit through drink or drugs, suspect him of being the driver of the BMW. Um, he matches the description. I don't doubt that he is uh, possibly the driver, so we'll take him down to the cells. Yeah, he was out there, Thor, Hammer, that boy. Where are we going? Where are we going? Back in custody, the officers aren't taking any chances. And with good reason. Can you hear me? You alright? Do you agree to provide two specimens of breath for analysis? And he's still his same talkative self. <laughs> Snide ginger, mate. Two snide specimens ginger, of breath. Snide ginger, bread. Bread. Snide for ginger. Analysis. He's not a proper ginger. She's a snide one. Are we going to uh, take that as a failure to provide? Yeah, you take that as a failure to provide, mate. The man was later charged with failure to provide a sample of breath. He awaits his day in court. Uh, we know it was high. He's in no fit state to do anything. He's clearly uh, not fully compass mentors. Whether that's his natural state, whether that's through drink, drugs or anything, but he's not somebody that you safely want on a road. And certainly I wouldn't want him on the road uh, following me if I was driving along. Still to come, a wrong un on the wrong side. Mystery drivers. It's Tuesday morning rush hour, and interceptors Nick Priestley and Stephen Wright are out on the early shift. I don't like earlys. I don't yeah, like getting out of bed. I don't like getting out of bed. Um, I don't think anybody likes getting out of bed. That 5:25 alarm call is painful. As well as early starts, Stephen, nicknamed Bobo, isn't a fan of mushrooms, though he does like Leeds United and a nice Sunday roast. This morning, he and every other officer out on patrol is on the lookout for a car, which is allegedly driven straight at an off-duty police officer. Hey, it's the hit 0840 The cops are left during black. Uh, vehicle failed to stop time to also been involved in an incident with an off-duty officer on a pedal cycle. The car has been seen in another part of the city, and 20 minutes later, it's activated an ANPR camera close to Nick and Stephen. It's heading their way. Make sure I'm your mum five. Uh, we've seen that hit uh, as the rule towards M606. We're, we're going to go look for it. It's a black Astra that's failed to stop twice recently. It's also driven at an off duty police officer. It is a black Astra stop shit at the light now. A colleague back at HQ is following the Astra's progress and guiding in Nick and Stephen. It's about a mile away from us, so we've got a little bit of catching up, especially with traffic, it's not going to be ideal. So we'll give it a new idea, Ben. With the blues on and his foot down, Nick boots it towards the Astra. Squeezing through the rush hour traffic, eagle eyed Stephen soon spots it. 107, you're last. It's there. The Astra driver immediately makes off and mounts a pavement undertaking stationary traffic. Yeah, we've got it. It's failing to stop, won't it? We're not. The pursuit is on. The fleeing driver takes to the opposite lane, weaving in and out. Your buddy got no regard for no human safety at all. He's just trying to get up out of there. ...of oncoming traffic. Advanced driver train Nick knows he can't take those sorts of risks. Victor November 5, 6, Mike Tango Kilos failing to stop. We're uh, towards Oxford round about Halifax Road. Stand by. The Astra continues to drive in the opposite lane, entering a busy roundabout on the wrong side. Vehicles previously failed to stop. The pursuit may have to be aborted for safety reasons. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Alan, what is it? Uh, what is that? Rush hour traffic, rush hour morning traffic. It's getting too critical out here. We'll continue and it's now uh, Ruley Ave towards Stathgate. Despite having to battle through the traffic, Nick keeps the Astra in his sights. But 
Then the runaway driver hits the brakes, mounts the central reservation and once again drives into oncoming traffic. Switched over wrong side, uh, it's now behind us. Still continuing, uh, but it's wrong side. But it's now back in front of us, stand by. The fleeing driver is showing no concern for other road users. Barreling towards another round. The driver is showing no concern for other road users. She is so in her phone. She doesn't even realize the police chase just went by her. She doesn't even realize there's somebody on the opposite side of the road. Y'all gotta get out your phones, man, for your own safety. Look at this. Users barreling towards another roundabout on the wrong side of the road. Nick slows down and turns off the blues, bringing this pursuit to an end. With the roads this busy, they can't put lives at risk by continuing. I don't think we're going to know where it's gone. Even though they've had to end the pursuit, Nick and Steve know the fleeing Astra can't have gone too far. They continue the hunt and then less than a minute later, Nick notices a van driver waving at him. Where? Which way? Gone down that way. I don't want to pursue this one. The Astra driver's ditched his motor and legged it into a car park. Nick has to take a detour to get behind him. Oh! It's uh, abandoned. The runner could have gone one of two ways, so Nick takes a right while Stephen heads left. Yeah, we're on Fox. Stephen, you might as well have stayed in the car. I ain't even gonna lie to you, my boy. Chasing suspects is not it. <laughs> not it for us. Not this of, of a man of that stature. <laughs> Back now, uh, it's gone towards the MS distribution center of this ladder from the uh, Astra. But there's no sign of them. Seen anybody running? Seen anybody running? Thankfully, Nick's had more joy. Come here! He spotted someone in the car park running back towards the road. Come here! Six on the floor. He's got the runner, who appeared to have swallowed something whilst trying to get away. Spit it out! Spit it out! But the suspect's keeping his mouth shut. Spit it out! Spit it out! We just necked a lot of gear. Turn over. We'll do it here. We just necked a lot. Hey. Do you want to spit it out? Spit what out? Get up! Get up! With nothing in his mouth. He gives him a quick search. Oh, what else on you? I've got what else on you. Got what on me? I've got anything else on you. All on me. He doesn't have anything on him, but he's still facing a trip to the cells. All right, you man. You're under suspicion of fitness driving, theft of motor vehicle. Don't stop. You don't say anything. They may have me. They are exhausted. Defence. You don't mention my question, something which will look like caught. Anything you do, say, maybe you never. All right? You understand that? Another car's arrived to take the man to the cop shop. Fellow stop, then it's driving. You need to tell custody that he's next to the gear. 22 year veteran Nick's favourite subject at school was PE. But today's workout has left him a little bit out of puff. I don't like running, I'm no good at it. Uh, good job though, all the same. Ask Steve how he feel about it. It's a car that's come to our attention a few days before, I think it is. It's driven at an off duty Bobby. It's not the type of car that we want on these streets. We've seen it about a mile away. It's made off before we even got behind it. Uh, we followed it. It's got the wrong side of the road, for God's sake. What we're supposed to do, you know. So luckily, it's stopped by itself because on here, it's really busy, as you can see. Um, and he's gone off into industrial estate there. So. Luckily for me, he's running across in front of me and then he's uh, sort of give himself up. Before heading off to book the man in, Nick takes a look at the Astra, which has taken a bit of a hit. Done for oil pan leaking. Hey man, shout out to the Kansas City Chiefs for winning the Super Bowl. As has his own car when he took the shortcut over the curb. Is the car okay? It sounds like it. Might be worth just running it over to 41, see yeah. if we can have a look at it. Oh. 
despite the bump, the car's okay to take them back to Bradford Nick. It's only half nine in the morning, and the interceptors already have a dangerous driver locked up. Back in custody, the main concern is what the man may have swallowed could cause him some damage. Anything on you that you shouldn't have? Right, listen, this is very, very important, and this is for your safety. When the officers have chased you, they've seen what they believe is you put something in your mouth and swallowed it. Ah, oh, you know what it was? The guy was just hanging off my jaw. Not interested in any drug related offences as far as that's concerned. Like All I'm interested is you could become very ill very quickly. But once again, the driver's keeping his mouth shut, but he does seem dizzy and disorientated. I want to know what you've taken. I'm talking what you've swallowed. I just want to it's not normal to be feeling like this, though, is it? Mm. My concern now is obviously I'm going to get the nurse to look at him, um, do some kind of assessment whether she feels he's under influence of uh, any kind of controlled drug. If he is, the chances are he's going to end up at hospital. And what we're trying to get across there is I'm not particularly interested in the possession of the drug. My concern is that um, if you become unwell in here, uh, it could be fatal. Anything that you can be say or will be used in the court of law. I, I believe that he's genuinely concerned about his safety and well-being, um, but at the same time, I understand why he's playing it like this. Hold on, I'm blurry. I can press play live. <laughs> The driver of the Astra was examined by a nurse, who deemed him fit to be questioned. No further action was taken in relation of the suspected possession of drugs or the alleged incident involving an off-duty police officer. However, he was found guilty of dangerous driving and driving with no license or insurance. He was sentenced to two and a half years behind bars. Oh, no, suspended sentence on this one he get real time it's a sunny thursday afternoon and interceptor gary mcmasters and rookie steph slater are on the hunt for an errant mum on an illegal school rookie Ste oh, this the rookie. Steph slater are on the hunt for an errant mum on an illegal school run so keep an eye out i'm gonna get down to the next one for the schools down here i think it's up in this estate yeah yeah We've had a, uh, an intelligence marker hit on, on a vehicle that's being used by a female. So she's using her husband's car, but she's got no license and no insurance. So we're just trying to make some ground up and get into the area where it was seen. 11 year veteran Gary's favorite gadget at home is his TV box. But on the job, his top tech is the automatic number plate recognition system, which helps him track down wrong -uns. That's the NPR hits coming in. Different tones for different uh, different types of alert. So somebody could put an app marker on in Hampshire uh, and they could drive past a camera in Leeds and we'd know about it. And then obviously I've got my in-car stuff, so if we drive past it, it'll alert in-car. ANPR hasn't helped him track down the missing car. Hey Steph, if you're watching this, you've got beautiful eyes. I'm feeling a little bit lost in them, you feel me? Reaction Riz at your finest. <laughs> My bad. I'm gonna edit that out. ANPR hasn't helped him track down the miscreant mother, but as they head away from the school, a different car coming towards them pings their in car ANPR system. In car ANPR system. Whatever it takes to catch a crew. Oh, do they got that here? I'm, I'm sure they do. Driver. Is it male, female? Female. Or is it this Audi here? Yeah. The Audi's insured to a man, but there's intel that it's being driven by a woman who's disqualified. Camera's at 1522. Is that it? She's gone right. I think so. So they need to see who's behind the wheel. Yep. Yep. If it's a male driver, we'll probably just let it go. If it's a female, it'll be worth a look. Going right. As the Audi goes round the roundabout, they get a clear look at the driver. It's female. Yeah, it is. 
They know the name of the woman who's alleged. It's female. Yeah, it is. Stephanie, you too geeked, ain't you? You happy. You want to get your little pursuit on, little rookie? Go ahead. They know the name of the woman who's allegedly driving whilst disqualified. So decide to pull the car to see if she's behind the wheel. Three one more right now. Let's go get her. Yeah, let's have a look. You're so eager, Steph. Can't even hold back the smirk. Hi, love. No, 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 it's just a routine stop check, that's all. Have you got your license on you and everything? I am actually. Oh, no, no. She's got a dick, ain't she? <laughs> any, uh, uh, any ID, really? What is your name? Hayley Patrick. Hayley isn't the name of the disqualified driver. Are you known to police? No. Hayley, what's your date of birth? 30th of the 12th. Yeah. 96. 96. <laughs> Whose car is it? Is it 30th of the 12th? 30th of the 12th. Why did y'all say the date like that? So December 30th, 1996? In your, your name and oh, everything, yes. yeah? No, because I've only just bought it, so I've just set the log book off. Right. It's slightly suspicious. The woman says she's not the disqualified driver who's linked to the car, but doesn't have any ID to prove it, or any documents to show that she owns the car. Have you got a driving license? Yeah. Honestly? Yeah. Because I can't find you on here. Why can't you? Have you got any other names that you go by? No. Tell me your date of birth again. 13th of the 12th. Oh, that's th th no, that's not what you've told. Ah, uh, now, you come on now. Haley. Now you're 92, now it's, not first it was 96, which was Meh. As the driver's confused about her birthday, it's possible she could have got mixed up about her name. This is so nasty right now that it's good. You ever had something like that? We, you know it's nasty, but you just can't stop drinking. We need to continue the discussion in the cop car. Oh. In the back on that side for me, love. Who did you buy the car from, love? Um, it was from Huddersfield. I think we were a black man in a car wash thing in Huddersfield. Come on. Thank you, Steph. Thank you. Hold on, man. Hold on. No, because somebody got to. Thank you. Because she bogus for that. She bodine for that, ain't she? Come on. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a pigmented man. From Hunter, like, come on, in a car, come on now. You feel me, Steph? Steph, you feel me? Crazy. No. Are you shit at lying or? Uh, no. She wants me shit at lying. <laughs> hey, tell us no, the truth. Ben, no, I've told you the truth. I've told you the You've truth. You've had a lot. If, right. With the driver not cooperating, Steph decides to try the passengers. While Gary continues the questions. And what are you date of birth again? 30th of the 12th, 93. That's the third different date of birth she's given. She was born 96, 93, and 92. Is she a vampire? The new moon dates or something. 30th of the 12th. Yeah. 96. 96. <laughs> We're gonna get to the bottom of it, aren't we? At the end of the day, she, she's got no life. Steph got that trunk on her, don't she? That's tough. <laughs> this is our shit. It was this. She got a little caboose back there. Lady, is, this your, is it your mum? Yeah. Mine. Yeah. All right. Cheers, fella. <laughs> got a driving license you got? She got a girl you're working with some back air. Your back air, huh? Can put it in the... A driving license. What kind of driving license? An actual dri pink driving license. Pink driving license. How long have you had that? About 9, 11 months. Oh, no, yeah, about 13 months now. Right, OK, because the driving licence database is not showing anything with that name and that date of birth. Right, Hayley. 
Because that's not your name. Yes, it is my no, name. No, it's not. Yeah, it is my name. I've just spoke to your brother. Yeah, it is my name. I've just spoke to your brother. Yeah, your surname's name. not. Either the cops have got it wrong, or she's lying. So either the details are incorrect or you don't have a driving license. No, it is right. Yes, it is right. So do you have a driving license? Yes, I've got a driving license. So why isn't it showing up as a got times. one? Why it's not showing <laughs> What's the girl from uh, Misfits? I can never remember characters' names and shows. The girl from Misfits, that's a rocket science, rocket scientist. This is who she reminds me of right now. I don't know why. I don't know why. I don't know why it's doing that. And the driver's becoming agitated. You've given me. me. You know where you going, to Haley? You're going to jail, buddy. <laughs> you're go you're out of here. In front of everybody, like, like, and it's actually yeah. embarrassing. I don't understand why you're stopping me anyway. Well, look, right, Caleb, I'm a road police and traffic officer. Yeah. Right, okay. Yeah. I have the right to stop any vehicle right. being used yeah. on the road for, for, a, do reason, for yeah. a routine document yeah, there's check. There's no reason. Uh, there's I don't need a reason to stop you. No, I don't. The road traffic act says I can stop. You're talking over me, so I'm shouting. I'm talking over you. You are. I'm talking over you at all. I'm trying to talk to you, and you're talking. I've got right to speak like anybody else has got right to speak. You're asking me a question, I'm trying to answer it, and you're talking over me. I cannot find any trace of a driving okay. license for the details that you are providing. Right, okay. And I'd like to know why that is. Well, I don't know. Because at this moment in time, I don't believe you've got one. And if I don't think you've got one, then you'll be walking home and I'll have to take the car. No, you won't. With the driver not budging, Steph decides to try a different tack. What's your mum called? Barbara. What's she really called? Barbara. Don't matter what my mum's called. She ain't being called. She's not called. No, she ain't. I'll go ask her. Go ask her what? She has been pulled. I have. I don't understand why she's asking her name. Hi, love. I know it's not yourselves that have been pulled, etc. However, that's obviously your daughter. She's identified you're a mum. If we don't find out who she is, we're going to end up having to arrest her. What's your name? The driver's mother's happy to cooperate, and her name isn't Barbara. You got a car with mom, children. Y'all gotta be on the same page in this lie. Like, I'll just. <laughs> Who said that with my mum? You. No, I didn't say that with my mum. All right. Mom. You did. And no, she's no. also said that she's your mum. No, wait, it doesn't matter. She's not being pulled. It's me that's being yeah, pulled. Yeah, you've been pulled. You're giving me false details. No, I'm not so you've got about two minutes to sort this out and no, start no, talking do, to me. Do what you're doing because no, I've told you my details and that's that. That's all I can say. You're gonna end up that's all getting arrested. Well, arrest me then. Right, I don't believe you're giving me the right I details. I don't believe that you you sort of talking shit. That I don't really care to be honest with you. Right. We'll go off to custody then. Yeah. We'll sort it out the there. Line. Yeah. I'll go get the uh, secure keys. Car keys. Vehicle. So the driver's off to the nick, and the car's off to the pound. We're going to be taking the car. So do you want to get everything out that you need? All right. Once they've got everything out of it. Realisation seems to finally have sunk in. Well, I need to get out, so I need to sort the kids out, please. Well, you're under arrest now, aren't you? Yeah, that's perfectly fine, but I need to sort the kids out. How are you going to sort them out if you're under arrest? Well, then my kids, what are going to do? Leave them there? I'm going to leave them in care of your, uh, your mother and your brother. Well, no, that's, you can't do that. How can you do that? Well, you've been arrested. You did all that. All you had to do was give them people your name at that point. You got your kids in the car, you getting a, you gonna get arrested. No, you being serious? What yeah. Because you you've been arrested. No, don't give up. Right. Once the shopping's unpacked, Gary and Steph take Haley back to the station where she finally fesses up. Straight away, she gave her a genuine name and date of birth to us uh, for the interview. The problem we've had here is the length of time. We stopped her at 20 past three, it's now five past eight. We could have dealt with it in 20 minutes at the side of the road. She knew that we had her. She knew it, and we knew it. It was just a matter of getting the right information to put it to her, to make her realise that. Thankfully, we've done it. It's just been a bit more protracted than we would like, shall we say. The woman was later convicted of obstructing a police officer, driving while disqualified, and driving without insurance. She was fined £150, plus a £30 victim surcharge, and was given six points on her driving license once her current disqualification ends. 
I still don't even understand the point system. The car she was driving was seized and taken to the police pound, where the recovery cost is £150 plus £20 per day of storage. Coming up... What? Oh. An interceptor's... It's just past midnight. An interceptor's Andy Howarth and Claire Gray are on a blue light run to a house where there's been an alleged break-in. We're on a burglary operation and there's a burglary just come in, or a potential burglary. I'm going, just coming in. Yeah, X-ray Romeo 76 and 30 on route. That was a huge yeah, big Yeah, these ones are quite bad up here. The humps aren't helping Andy drive or Claire find the address on her phone, but nothing will stop them from catching burglars. They are the lowest scum that we have to deal with, and I love cats. I'm trying to drop a video. Okay, so while my daughter is with her mom this month, week, I'm trying to drop a video, like, one video at 8 a.m. for my, my time. One video at 8 a.m. my time, 11 a.m. my time, 2 p.m. my time, and then 5 p.m. my time. I'm trying to be in y'all head all day, every day. <laughs> for the next week, plus Patreon, plus my other channel. We'll see how far I can get done, man. We'll see. Gotcha. It's nice to catch. If I do two of the videos at night and then two during the day, it shouldn't feel that hard to do. Pause. Wow. Do in the act. They ain't got her in the wriggle real bad. Motorbike enthusiast Andy has caught a fair few burglars in his almost 23 years on the job. His colleague Claire has been a cop for about half that time and prefers to hit the road towing a caravan. Tonight, the speed humps may be giving them both a bumpy ride. <laughs> but thankfully, it's coming to an end. A bumpy ride. <laughs> Thankfully, it's coming to an end. Yeah, you'll be all right now. There is no more. There might be this one. <laughs> That's it now. There's no more. As the speed restrictions stop, so does the need to speed over them. The burglary shout has turned out to be a false alarm. So Andy and Claire continue on their patrol. And not long after, Stand by, stand by. A car with its interior light on catches their attention. What on earth are you doing? It's stopping for us. That's nice of it, isn't it? Oh. oh, hello. What? What's going on with your internal light on? Oh, none of them straight. Are you giving me a receipt? I've not bought no, anything. I'm, I'm a delivery driver, my <laughs> The man's a delivery driver for a local takeaway, but the car is a cause for concern. Have you got any tax on this car? 50-50, ask the audience. I need to ring the boss up. No, I need to ring the boss up. Let's have a look. Moment of truth. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. You better ring your boss up because your car's getting seized. Is it? Yeah. New DVLA powers. And just let us... All of that for having your interior lights on. Cut them lights off, people. Seize the vehicle if you've got more than two months tax out and your tax expired in March. No way. It's one of an estimated 700,000 untaxed vehicles on UK roads. It's absolutely falling to bits, this car. On this 55 plane, look, it's only got 70,000 miles on it. Well, might only have that many miles on it. Might only have that on it, but... It's 70,000 miles on this one. Look at it. One genuine okay. owner, one lady. You know what we were saying? <laughs> one lady genuine <laughs> owner. <laughs> Did <it? laughs> One lady genuine owner and 36 yeah. Rogers drivers. Oh. <laughs> it's not just the bodywork that's in a state. All brand new tires, everything I'm saying. Well, that one's not brand new. Unless you got them from a Formula One team. Look at inside. Brand new 20 years ago. Look at that. This seems like a fun start. I've just got brand new tires. Oh, that. That's. Okay. Uh, what's the buddy name? When people just do nothing. Chabadi G, just capping, just lying. Chabadi. Not brand new tire. Legal. Yeah. Just on the line in there. Come on. It's legal. Let me, mate. It's never seen legal. Come on, have a look. 
Yeah. You might have to get down and dirty though. Here? You haven't got any tread. Obviously, I could only see you from down I know. I just love it. Join traffic and scrabble around in Gutter in Bradford. I will get it taxi in the morning. No. Yeah, you will. Because if you don't, you don't get your car back. And you're also going to get a piece of paper because that tyre is proper illegal. Yeah, it's proper illegal. So, you, what's going to happen? You get. Wait, well. So, if I. Wait a minute. If I'm too broke to get new tyres, I get a ticket for it? What is going on? <laughs> what's going to happen with that is because we've had gotten so well and you've made me laugh. Rather than me give you three points and hundred pound fine, I'm going to give you a vehicle defect notice form Thank that you. says Thank you, you Thank get you. that car Thank tire you. fixed, Thank you. take it to an MOT Thank testing you. shop, yeah. and if it gets fixed within 14 days and we get the paperwork back within that 14 days, then there's no further action. But if you don't, then you get an extra three points to add to your tally. As Andy's been so nice to him, the driver decides to offer him a treat. I can give you three chicken burgers, though. Yeah. Three chicken, chicken burgers, burgers. from Rogers. Yeah. <laughs> I love you. You're making my night. <laughs> you're making it up. That's why you're not getting three points. I'm fully but is y'all taking the car? You can look. Fully legal, apart from my tyres and no tax and condition of my car. And apart from that, I'm all right. Yeah. <laughs> Good as gold, this lad. Good as gold. <laughs> I love people with character, and this guy has got plenty of He has of got it. plenty of character. He's certainly being positive about what's happened. Well, I'm, I'm not really bothered, mate. It's, a, it's just a company car, just get another one. <laughs> and while he heads off in search of new wheels... See ya! <laughs> Claire and Andy have to wait for the recovery truck, and something round the corner has caught her eye. I'll tell you what, though, I found a lovely rig. It's a al fresco rig. Uh, oh, sweet. Yeah. Good enough, isn't it? Once the recovery driver arrives to deal with the... Is that, but that's legal? Fiesta, keen caravaner Claire decides to take a closer look. Hi. It stinks. It positively smells. This is such a great caravan spot. I think it's within the top ten caravan in, uh, and camper club. Um, it's definitely up there. It's got lovely scenic views there. Look. Oh, oh, full aircon. Look at that. One careful owner. That's just like that Fiesta. One careful owner. <laughs> All right. Till I leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post. I'm done.